<laughs> so welcome to the show. So we have a great topic today. We are talking about the power of Moment March. So before we get into this topic, Mandy, um, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself, your business, and how you found yourself uh, in the, the promo uh, space? All right. Well, so I'm in Kansas City, and I have a distributorship called Brand Energy Marketing. Um, I started, I've always been in advertising and marketing sales, uh, advertising sales, uh, my entire professional career. And gosh, when my son was going to school, when he was a baby, I guess that little Mother's Day out, half day preschool uh, kind of thing, I thought, you know, I really, I need to do something. And I knew where my talents lied. And so a girlfriend of mine had her own distributorship in Colorado, where I was living at the time. And she asked me if I wanted to do contract sales for her. So did that for a couple of years moved to Kansas City, moved back home to Kansas City in 2013 and thought, okay, I know how to navigate ESP. I know I can get an ASI number. I know how that works. I have supplier relationships and anything else I don't know how to do, I can have my accountant on speed dial. So I opened my own business in 2013 um, and here we are. So what year is it? I, we lost years, 2021. So, 2021. Yeah. So how many yeah. years have you been in the uh, industry? So I think this is my 10th year. So okay. in some circles, I'm still really new. And in others, I'm, you know, nearing the uh, the next level. So yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've, I've been in 13 years now and I can't believe it. It's like I just blinked and now I'm 13 years. Uh, but you're right. I mean, there there are people in this industry 30, 40 even mm -hmm. longer um and then like we have the a godfather new... you can't leave it you just that's you right something that's... Else come back in because it's a great industry and you, people leave all the time and they find their way back i i've noticed it uh multiple times um you know people who have left the industry they, they come back and they're like why'd you come back oh i missed it i love this industry you know i thought you know it was greener somewhere else and it really wasn't you know and you come back and it, i mean the connections here we can go on and talk about this as a as, as a separate podcast but yeah i mean it's like the connections you make and you know the people you meet it's just it's just a great industry so yep. let's talk about philo uh philanthropy and sustainability there, there seem to be pretty big parts of your business so uh what inspired your passion for giving back I grew up in a household, so my mom and dad and my brother and I, and it was one of those where if you needed something and one of us had it, it was yours. If someone didn't have it, then none of us had it, right? So we were just, it was sort of instilled upon us that if you have something that can change someone's life or make someone's day better, it's really up to you to do that. Help somebody in need. Um, anything from you know, rescuing uh, dogs from a sign that said free puppies. And, oh, well, they were rescued. They needed to be rescued. I mean, I don't know how many times I brought home dogs and kittens and things growing up or just, you know, seeing somebody maybe on the street corner that needed something to eat and go buy them a sandwich. So we just, that's just the house that I grew up in. And so it's just stayed with me. So well, very like um, empathetic. And so, I mean, I, I'm the same way, you know, I grew up in a household just like that, you know, um, and seeing strays yeah. and I mean we we had a house full of of cats and dogs and it was it was one of those things where you know my mother was a big softy and I was like yeah, mom there's a kitten outside I don't know where she belongs no one else will yeah yeah so I you know with, I did it with my son now too like you know you know you see someone on the corner even more so maybe in the last year but really leading up to that I've always had um, boxes of granola bars in my car because if I may not have enough money in my wallet to make a difference in someone's life, but I can't let somebody go hungry. So, you know, from the time he was five, he's like, Mom, pull over there. You know, I've got to put the granola bar ready. And so he'd hand, you know, somebody a granola bar if they needed something to eat. We've bought lunches and meals for people. Um, just, I can't see another human in need and not do something. So, I'm the same way. That in him. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, kind of. When I'm in New York City and I, you know, and it's, I see it a lot less these days with homeless people, although I haven't been back to New York since the pandemic. But, you know, prior to the pandemic, I would I would always give spare change and I would have friends say, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, I'm like, how could you look at the situation and, and how can you uh, turn a blind eye and still be able to feel good? I can't right. do that. And there are times where I don't have anything. It's like, I'm so sorry. I are you hungry? Can I I don't have any cash, but I've got a debit card, I can go buy you a sandwich, but I don't right. have anything to give you in this moment. Sure. That. Yeah. And it, which is a, a very admirable quality, you know, although you know, sometimes you run out of money giving people money. So it's like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? So all right, so I've got pens, I've got a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, Here's a pen. 
here's a hat and a pen. So uh, I can put clothes on your back. I got t-shirts. Yeah. yeah. So moment merch, you know, like it, it's it's sort of a new phenomenon. Uh, for those people who don't know what mom, moment merch is, can you give a little bit of a, a definition? So two things. One, I actually think the term may be new, but the concept is lifetimes old. Think back to in the hospital, the little button you've got that said it's a boy or it's a girl. That is a piece of merchandise that is branded to your experience that day. And you keep it in the, you know, the, the box of goodies that you get from you know, that time and that experience. But it goes back to birthday party favors from a kid going to a party, those party favors. That is merchandise that, that connects you to that moment and you remember that moment. Wedding favors, things like that. Concert memorabilia. That's a moment that you've experienced that you want to treasure and hold on to. So you buy concert t-shirts, you buy, you know, the, the, the autograph posters and CDs, things like that, because it connects you to the, and there's an emotional attachment to that experience. So the concept and the name might be something we're talking about now is a neat new buzzword, which I love moment merch. I think it's great. Uh, but the concept is something that we've all experienced for years and years and years. Some of my very favorite moment merch items, I mean, uh, limited edition and exclusive t-shirts from an event. Um, those are things that I think are very powerful when it comes to fundraising. Uh, but other ones that really connect you, you know, drinkware. I'm a huge drinkware, <laughs> a huge drinkware yep. fan, branded drinkware. So, you know, things like this, I think are really, um, uh, they've got longevity and really great branding opportunities, and they still have that emotional connection to the event from where we got it. Right, and that's and that's interesting to 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 talk about. Like you know, you saying that moment merch has has been around for a long time. Um, you know, I think you know in in the the course of the last five years, I think social media has really kind of um, escalated. Uh, what moment merch is and, and being able to turn something that happens at like an event, uh, uh, like a sports event or something, you know, uh, political in nature and being able to turn around promotional products in a very quick and efficient way. So we're going to segue to, um, you know, to something that happened to your brother, who's actor Paul Rudd. Uh, he went viral after the Kansas City Royals won the World Series. Um, because of something he said on live TV. Um, and not long after that, uh, T-shirts memorializing what he said um, were printed and sold and the proceeds went to a charity. Can you tell us a little bit more about this story and what he said and how it's a perfect <laughs> example of moment merch? It's, it's funny because it is two polar opposites coming together. So it was right after we won uh, the playoffs and we're going to the World Series. And he was down on the field, the local news anchor asked him what his plans were, how he was going to celebrate this. And um, because we really just were going back to my mom's house, he was like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna go back to my mom's house. And then he realized in his head, like that probably sounded really lame. So just being silly and funny, he turned it into, oh, well, you know, there's a kegger at my mom's house, you know, $5 cover. You know, he's not a party at the bar kind of guy. You know, you don't read about him in, you know, paparazzi and tabloid. So that was why in his mind, it was funny because that's really not who he is. So that was the end of it for us. And then on the way home, our phones were blowing up. Like, you know, the party at your mom's house. I was tagged on, you know, in, on Facebook, like, hey, you know, where's the party? And we were, we were cracking up about this because we're like, oh yeah, I guess people heard about that. Um, so fast forward, uh, people actually did show up to my house, which is actually was my parents' house. That's where I live now. And uh, so people did actually show up for this kegger at, at Paul's mom's house. Um, so through this philanthropy that we do every year called Big Slick, uh, raises money for Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. Uh, we do a, a limited edition t-shirt every year with an amazing uh, partner of ours who does uh, apparel in Kansas City. And they reached out and said, hey, can we make a t-shirt with the saying on it. And obviously proceeds will go back to Children's Mercy through Big Slick. And so I just, I ran it past Paul and he was completely shocked that people heard about it because he's not on social media. He has no Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, any kind of social media presence. So he was laughing that people heard about it. I'm like, you know, people heard about it. It's this thing called going viral. You, have you heard of that? And so, you know, that sort of became the joke, but yeah, t-shirts were created 
um, and the funds went to Children's Mercy. So how long be, uh, until those t-shirts were created? Uh, literally days. Okay, so days. And then do you know how many um, were sold? Um, you know, it's funny. I don't have for the Royals, but when, in fact, I actually have them here. When, so this was the original one in our Royals colors. Oh, nice. You know, oops, tiger at my mom's house. Can I get and one of those? Limited edition. <laughs> and then when the Chiefs won uh, and we're going to the uh, Super Bowl, we did another one. And on this, we did, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I think we did 500. Okay. And so basically it was um, a $10,000 donation to the hospital. I believe on those numbers, that's what they were. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I, I, you know, I love that story, uh, you know, and those shirts, like I, I believe I saw Bill Petrie wearing one. Yeah. If, I, if I'm not mm -hmm. cor correct. Yes, it was yeah. Bill Petrie. He, he had um, that t-shirt on and I was like, wow, I love that t-shirt. And I had no idea the history of that, um, mm -hmm. you know, and until, you, you know, we were talking about it, but really that, that's an, that's an awesome example of, of the power of, mer of moment merch, you know, mm -hmm. something that, you know, somebody, you know, obviously uh, high profile, like your brother um, said something and it's like, people jump on it and they're like, we love this. We want to turn this around um, and create some merchandise and, and speed is really what, what yeah. is pushing this because in a few days people are going to forget, you know, and it's like the turnaround I think is, is what's really important here for the, for the moment March aspect. Right. So, and it, it was a very happy accident too. I yeah. Mean, you, you couldn't have, you couldn't have scripted it any better. Right. And so to, to be able to, like you said, quickly turn that around and having, and I think, you know, from, uh, from a promo industry standard, I think having a perspective, having that relationship with, as a distributor or having those relationships with your suppliers, that is a critical relationship to have, to be able to rely upon them to help you, you know, with, with an experience and create that for, for your clients. So I think having those relationships um, can absolutely make any, any situation better. Right. And I, and I'm going to ask you that in a second, um, you know, because certainly you need as a distributor to have, you know, certain things in your arsenal, um, yeah. you know, and, and we'll talk about that in a second. I just want to really touch base with you quickly about um, the charity Big Slick and um, why, why you chose Children's Mercy. So it's really a diamond in the rough. So it is one of the only pediatric, um, it's the only pediatric uh, cancer center and um, hospital within between, um, what is it, Omaha, Oklahoma City, Denver, and St. Louis. Okay. So they take on, it's a nonprofit, it's not part of any hospital system, and they take patients regardless of their ability to pay or not. And so whether you have had kids or you know someone who has kids, whether you've, you've you know, used their services or not, everything from a scrape knee to God forbid, life-saving techniques, you walk in and it's such an amazing place. It's such an amazing place. And so um, this event that we have called Big Slick, um, it started back in 2009, Rob Riggle, uh, who grew up in Kansas City. Um, and it's sort of, you know, we call them our guys, uh, five guys who have Kansas City roots and uh, left town, like hometown boy does good kind of thing. They've all gone into the acting and um, entertainment world. Right. And so we have Rob Riggle, uh, my brother, as you mentioned, Paul Rudd, Jason Sudeikis, Eric Stone Street, and David Keckner. And Rob had done an event um, and toured the hospital and thought, man, we really got to do something for this. So he called Paul and said, hey, do you want to do an event? Let's do a poker tournament. He's like, yeah, totally. I'm in. Okay, call Sudeikis. So they called Jason. And so for many years, it was the three of them as our hosts. They would bring in um, their celebrity coworkers basically and say, hey, I'm doing this fundraiser. Do you want to come in? Everybody volunteers their time. Fast forward from there a few years, um, David Keckner and Eric Stone Street became our two other official hosts. So we now have five hosts. What makes it even a little more unique is that each one of those guys has family members that, are, that have come and gone and returned and are still in uh, some level uh, of Kansas City. And so we've all, we're all here. We all work on it together. We have this amazing committee of volunteers who are friends who've become family. It really is this family affair. And we do really fun, unique, exciting events throughout this weekend. But the best part 
hands down, regardless of which celebrities come in, regardless of how big the party is, the best part is going to the hospital for every single one of us because we have designated, um, over many years, we designated the pediatric uh, uh, oncology department, the cancer center and blood disorder sure. diseases as our um, beneficiary. And so our first year, our goal was, we had no idea what we were doing. It's like, well, okay, maybe we can raise $50,000. We raised $120,000. Oh, wow. And every year, it's like, if we can just make, you know, one more dollar than that, then we feel like it's a win. To date, we did our, so we did 10 years in person. And then uh, year 11, we did Big Slick at Home, which was last year. And right. then in uh, about 30 days, we have uh, our second virtual event. It's, it's a, with a twist, the way Big Slick normally is. Um, and to date, we've raised over $12 million for the hospital. Um, but like I said, going to the hospital is the best part because we have this, it, it sounds gross because we get something out of it and that's not why you volunteer. That's not why you, you donate your time, treasure or talent because you get something out of it. It's just this amazing side effect that you feel so good knowing that here are these families that are possibly going through the worst experience they've ever had to deal with. And seeing their faces light up when they get to meet any one of our celebrity guests who volunteered their time or our host, we've taken them out of that moment for just a minute. And just to see, be able to see that look on their face. I mean, I've had to go duck into supply closets and to go cry because it's just so emotional. It's such a beautiful I, experience. I'm starting to that. tear up here. I mean, I can't imagine what it must be like to know that, you know, you're helping um, like you said, these parents who you, you can't even imagine what they're going through. You know, I have a couple mm -hmm. kids, um, you know, very healthy kids. I'm very fortunate. You know, we're very blessed. And I always think about these, you know, you see these stories. I'm on social media all the time. And I see these stories about these kids, you know, who, they, you know, they're born into this world with cancer or, or something. And you're just like, oh, my God, like, I can't imagine what these, you know, not only the children are going through, but also the parents, yeah. you know, to, to struggle and through that. Siblings. And their siblings. And their siblings. And to, to know that you can make a difference, you know, by helping these people through. I mean, the last thing they're concerned about is, you know, it's like, oh, these financial bills, like, you know, the, the most important thing is getting the kids to care, you know, worry about the money afterwards. If they don't have to worry about that money and it's like, you know, these, you know, they get through, you know, a horrible time. I mean, that's just, God, I, I can't even imagine how I would feel. I'd be ducking into a lot of closets too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty remarkable because with, it's really, I mean, we have such a, a close relationship with um, the child life team and the mm -hmm. philanthropy department over at the hospital and everyone from the, the CEO to the research uh, physicians. And uh, just, it's, it's really this weird, close, like I said, you couldn't script it if you tried this crazy close family event. And, um, you know, the week leading up to the big slick week, children don't want to be discharged. They want to stay. It's like <laughs> Christmas week. It's yeah. like, like Santa's coming. Like it's Christmas yeah. week. They don't want to leave. And so it's, it's really, it's pretty special that, you know, kids want to stay in the hospital because they want to be a part of this. So it's, yeah. Uh, and, it's, it's you know, special. you mentioned five guys I'm, I'm i'm not somebody who like you know is really in touch with all the celebrities but i know all five of those guys you know i'm familiar with their work and they all seem like really good guys you know mm -hmm. i mean yeah, eric stone street with um what's that show that he was modern uh family. modern family um jason Sudeik, so i guess obviously the actor and your brother paul um david keckner i'm very familiar with he's he, you know, he plays small parts in a lot of comedies, but, you know, he's, he's got one of those uh, very recognizable faces. And who is the fifth one? Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. Yeah, of course. And, you know, he, he, I forget what um, comedy show he was on, but he's very, um, you he's know, very a bunch as well. He's done a bunch of well. yeah. one of the ones that I think a lot of people remember. Him for. I mean, he's uh, what they remember him for is in, um, oh gosh, I'm going to draw a blank on the name of the movie. Um, he was the taser cop. In, oh yes, uh, um, in um, uh, okay. the Hangover. The Hangover. The hangover. So, yes, yes, and he does. He's got his. He's got shows that he's doing. Uh, he and Steph Curry co-host um, that wacky, you know, golf show. Oh gosh, no, I feel terrible. I know what you're talking about, and also he does NFL stuff. He, I, he, I know he's huge NFL. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he did Saturday Night Live stuff. So, I mean, they're all crazy right. talented and funny, and just again down to earth, 
Mm-hmm. It's all about the kids. It's just we all share well, that same philosophy about kids. Well, that's great. I mean, like it, you know, in time of pandemic and like we were talking about earlier, gas shortages and who knows what else. You know, when you hear stuff like this, it just it brings a smile to your face because you know there's still good out there, and you know people are are you know that. I still believe in people. And, you know, when I hear stories like this, I'm like, yes, you know, it affirms my uh, belief that, you know, humans are good. And, you know, especially when it comes to kids, you know, I I see stories like this and it makes, makes me smile. So, so let's talk about um, uh, Moment Merch. We we were alluding earlier to, you know, what a distributor uh, must have in their arsenal uh, Mm -hmm. to really kind of you know, take the 2021 version of Moment Merch and really turn it around. So can you talk a little bit about what distributors should really have uh, available to them to to take advantage of Moment Merch? Yeah, for sure. I think when it comes to whether it's Moment Merch or really anything, I mean, you know, we were given two, two ears and one mouth, which means listen more than you speak, except in this moment, uh, just chatting along. Um, but, but listen to your clients too, ask questions, ask them, what are their goals? And then listen, like, what is the goal behind wanting to do a branded product? What is it? Right. And so having that question and answer, so you have a better understanding, do they just need to blow through a budget or do they, they, who's getting the project, the product, what's it for? Can you tie it to a fundraiser? Um, and then, like I said earlier, having that relationship with your trusted suppliers is critical from your multi-line reps to your supplier reps. Having that relationship is so critical because being able to pick up the phone and just say, hey, I've got this client. We want to do this thing. We want to tie it to a give back. You know, let's talk about what we can do with that. And so for me, I think those would be the two, um, the two critical steps to doing that. And then once you figure out what that product is, you got to create FOMO right? You got to right. create that fear of missing out that someone's going to miss out on not getting that product. So I have a, a stack of examples of products that from our industry, um, from, from our fundraising event through Big Slick, as well as from the promotional products industry that people covet because people talked about it on social. They got it at this event. And if you didn't get it, man, you, you know, you missed out. So, so yeah. let's, uh, Let's hear some examples. Ah, okay. So from the promo world, I think we can all give a toast. And many of us owe uh, Brian Stedham from uh, EMT uh, a toast for the promo AF um, mm-hmm. uh, concept. But partnering with Turvis promo on these awesome 20 ounce stainless tumblers, they're awesome. I love these. So I think that and then, you know, with Peerless uh, creating the promo AF bags that they, they created at uh, uh, for Expo. That right. one was a big one. It was like, where did you get it? I didn't get one. No, there weren't that many. Right. right. Uh, and then I love, you know, we did these uh, for Big Slick. We did the base camp um, um, Mesa bottle through Sweda. And there's a give back to this that goes back to the, you know, Wounded Warrior. Uh, so being able to have a give back from a give back is, I think, the best way that you can, that you can do right. Um, so those are a couple of examples. Another one, I think, which is huge, and they hit it out of the park every single time they do something, uh, is Common Skew. So okay. I mean, everything from, um, you know, their t-shirt or, yeah, t-shirts to bags to the sweatshirts, apparel, anything for their events that they do. It's like you get the box and it shows up. And, right. you know, the other part that I love about that is we're in this industry, mm-hmm. right? So we're used to seeing promotional products, but we are like our customers, when we get a box that shows up and we're unboxing the common skew, you know, skew pun at home mug or the, you know, the sweatshirt or from, you know, s and did their, their, their big um, event day, getting that box of things. Um, it creates such an emotion and a connection to that piece. And you just, you know, you want to brag that, Hey, I got my sweatshirt and people are like, I didn't get mine. So right. like, you have that, that moment. And so if you can create that, like we, if we can experience that and we're in the industry, imagine what we can do for our clients with that same, same right. Product. Yeah. And I love that we're having a discussion about moment merch within our industry. Um, and you bring up FOMO. You know, it, it it's clear that that is also very powerful when you take the, the power of moment merch and you and you combine it with social media, uh, which is what you see here. So you know, the the promo AF uh, logo. Uh, is something that I have seen on social media because the people who receive this these products are are people like Charity Gibson and you know people who 
who absolutely use social media to promote mm -hmm. these things. And I'm just like, you know, you see it and then that creates the, the, the FOMO, you know, FOMO, um, FOMO. <laughs> yeah, the promo FOMO. So when we but talk about, no, go ahead. When Bill Petrie and Kelsey Tanya, when they launched Brandivate and they did their entire campaign around, you know, we've got these boxes and, you know, it was, you know, on day one, do, and it just created this. And I think you, know, you guys talked about it, but right. it created this viral moment that people wanted to be a part of. We tuned in to see what other people were doing the next day for their, you know, for their, their posts and things. And it was all based on promotional products. Right. And it created an event and it created this, I didn't get to be part of the, you know, collective group that got to launch this. So, I mean, it created that, it, it did more than they ever thought it would and better than they ever dreamed it would. And, and that to me, it was just awesome. Was right. Huge. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, the people who are, you know, making these uh, types of f FOMO, you know, are the ones that are using the promotional mm -hmm. products and they're using social media and it's, you know, that's, I think the, the crux here is like, what are you doing with social media? You like you receive these products and it's like, oh, this is awesome, but you take it a step further. You know, now you're, you're putting it out there on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to put it, you know, I see them everywhere. And it's like, wow. It's like, you see that and you're like, Ooh, that's, Oh, I like that. Like you just showed me that you showed me that, um, uh, that water mug. And I was like, that's pretty, I like that. Um, and now I'm like, you know, being able to um, take a product, and that's the thing. You, it needs to be a product that people want. They will miss when it's gone. Somebody else wants to steal it, right? Like, they'll be devastated if you lose this product. So, you know, we'll coin our, the term um, our dear friend Danny Rosen coined, you know, brand fill. We want to make sure that it's not going to end up there. We want to make sure that it has longevity, that it has desirability. Other people either want to, to, to steal it or if you lose it, you'll be devastated. And it may not have been something you ever thought to buy for yourself. But now that you have it, it's this coveted, coveted um, item. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the X factor in this industry now. It's like, how do you create promotional products that people want to keep you know and I, I think, think that's yeah and I think the other part of that too is the messaging you know right. like just like from a distributor standpoint nobody wants to see my logo on their like they don't care but if mm -hmm. I put a good message on it they're gonna, on a good product they'll remember the message and the product I mean again nobody wants my logo on a mask on you know their face I don't want to see brand energy marketing right but you know what they might enjoy something that says spread joy not germs or you know there you go. Like something that has a message that makes that's relevant on a product that they need to use they don't need to see my logo they don't care right <laughs> and, and I think that is you know it might be a very simple distinction but it's huge in the long run because like you said you know we don't want these uh, products to end up you know, in a landfill, you know, and it's like, you know, that's the knock on our industry uh, for those who are outside of it. You know, you see all these news, oh, this stuff is, you know, it's junk, it's wasteful. It, well, no, not if you're doing it right, you right, know. Right, so. And that's where, so I'm um, on the uh, board with an amazing group of people um, on pr for promo cares. And that's the messaging that we are trying to get out, that there are companies and products that are, to the T following everything, you know, from, from corporate, um, uh, you know, from CSR and, and, and sustainability and corporate social responsibility and products with a give back. And so they are being um, smartly and safely produced with a give back that will continue to help others. So that's sort of the, the gospel that we're trying to, right. uh, to, to share with everybody is that these companies and these products exist. And if we as an industry can really make a shift toward concentrating on products that have that you can change things. You can make a positive change. Right. Um, from a planet standpoint, you know, sell, sell more of these than, than bottled water, you know, no disrespect right. to bottled water, but that's less waste, less plastic. You know, there's companies like, um, you know, uh, uh, fill it forward and near that every time you reuse and refill their bottle, you can scan and that with a QR code and that contributes money to a water project in another nation and all you're doing is something you do every day and that's drink water right right, right? i love so those examples so we can do mm -hmm. yep totally all right so we're going to be wrapping up shortly here so uh, i have a couple more questions for you um and now this one is kind of like you know is is moment merch like you know people are like oh is it just a fad or is it here to stay i know you say it's, it's been around a long time but where do you see moment merch going 
Oh, I think it's here. I don't think it's going anywhere. Think about when you go see your favorite band, you buy a, baby, mm-hmm. you buy a t-shirt at the show. Um, if you know that your purchase can help someone else. So thinking back to this pandemic um, time frame, you know, with the restaurant and service industry, I had a client, we created t-shirts for them and they sold them and the money went to the, um, the staff. It was just to support the staff when the restaurants were closed and they didn't have business. So, but some, you know, people were buying these shirts proudly supporting this cause. So I don't think that is ever going to go away. I right. I, I agree with you. I think like there's so much opportunity um, to seize on what's like current events. So like I'm a, I'm a big concert goer and I know the first time I get back into, um, you know, the concert scene, I, I know the type of t-shirt or hat I'm going to be after, you know, not the one that, that says, Hey, you know, just, this is a tour or this is the band, but the, but the t-shirt that's going to kind of reflect something like, Hey, you know, post pandemic tour or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like in touch with, with so we made with, it to our, <laughs> like we made right, it exactly. <laughs> we yeah. made it through or something like that. You know, like that to me is, is the perfect example of how powerful these products can be based on, on, on what's going on. And there's always something going on. I mean, the last year, you know, like I've never been, none of us have ever been part of anything like this. And the residual that's going to come out of this in terms of opportunity for, for moment merch, I think is going to be huge. You know, your first time back at a concert, your first time, uh, you know, doing a lot of things that you normally do that you haven't done in a while, you know, I think there's opportunity with promotional products. So, you know, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's going to, you know, get even bigger. Yeah, I agree. And and when you're at a concert and you, you know, you're a fan, right? So you have some ownership in that because this, this is a part of you, that experience and to commemorate that experience and have a thing. So whether it's, you know, a concert t-shirts, you know, I have a, you know, a slew of concert t-shirts that um, remind me of an event that I did and it was a great experience and I want to remember that. And and it's like you have this ownership of that moment and, and you're the fan and you get to celebrate that and you get that feeling every time you wear that or every time you, you know, you relive that experience. So no, I, it's, it's not, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's here. I, I can't wait for the first concert mask I get. I, you know, there's, there's yeah. going to be concert masks, even if they're not even required to wear at a concert, but I, I'm sure that, you they know, exist. Yeah, I, I've seen, them. I, you know, mm-hmm. I saw a lot last year because um, a lot of these bands were selling merchandise to try to supplement the income that they were losing because of the pandemic. And there were lots of, of band merchandise, you know, with masks, but mm-hmm. the first time I actually get one at a concert, it's just going to be like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. Because prior to, world. yeah, <laughs> prior to the pandemic, you would have been like, what is this? And now, right. and now it's yeah. part of like normal apparel right now. And with another thing, you know, with a lot of these, because a lot of these um, bands had already printed up a lot of their, their t-shirts and merch, whether they're reselling or not, but a lot of, I, I was reading a lot of them are um, upcycling them. So you can upcycle that merch and make a, you know, a collection out of that or upcycle it and use it for, again, those that will help overseas in impoverished um, yep. nations and things like that and give new life to, to that material since they couldn't have it at their actual event because their event didn't happen, so... Yeah. Awesome. So Mandy, thank you so much for taking the time today. I have one last question. We always at, end with a fun question. Okay. Um, so I have a list of questions here. Let me which, think which one I'm going to ask you. All right. Do you have any hidden talents? Oh, well, I'd say it's hidden, but I know that there's video out there somewhere. So I love karaoke. Um, I cannot hold a tune to save my life, but I, <laughs> I sing with passion um, uh, out of tune, but loudly. I yeah, like that. Way. I like that. So you, uh, you said you had a, uh, karaoke in your house, right? Yeah. So set up downstairs, uh, my basement is an Irish pub. And, um, so we have a, a band set up area down there with karaoke and live music. So yeah. Do, do you, have you it's been like back? Bar, but it's just, there's a house on it. It's, yeah. That's a, okay. I, lo- yeah. I, I love that idea. Um, I wish I had a Irish bar in my house. Um, it was really great during pandemic because, and the dress code is great because you can wear PJs. It's fine. Oh my God, guys, <laughs> I'm jealous now. Um, have you been to an actual bar yet since the pandemic to do karaoke? Um, so I am double vaccinated. So uh, me too. I, yeah, 
the big, you know, the big question is which one did you get? You know, those are like the new Pfizer. Questions. Who did you get? Oh, Moderna. Um, <laughs> Team we can Pfizer. Yeah. yeah, no, good for you. And good for you for doing your part to, you know, help the, help us get back to, to where we want to be. Um, I went, so yes, actually, I have not been to like, you know, like a bar night out, but my mom and another friend of ours every Tuesday had this real Tuesday lunch club when we would go to our most favorite Italian restaurant. My, my, we are friends with the family. It's a family owned business been around for 60 plus years. Um, and we've got, I've again, known them since I was single digit age. And so we would go every week and have this lunch and we've not been in the restaurant. We've done carry out here and there because we wanted to support obviously. Uh, but just last week, the three of us had our first lunch back in the restaurant and it just, it felt so good. Yeah, it felt No great. karaoke, no. Um... No karaoke there, no. Oh, but this is fun. So there is a group <laughs> here uh, that they are a Yacht Rock tribute band called Summer Breeze. So much fun. They've been doing uh, rooftop concerts uh, that overlook downtown Kansas City. So I have done some live music outside of mm -hmm. just, you know, downstairs in, in the pub. Um, but yeah, we've done that and that's been really fun. In fact, they're playing this weekend. So we'll be seeing them, um, overlooking downtown, which is just such a, uh, cool environment. Yeah. I, I love Yacht Rock, you know, and I'm, so I'm not embarrassed to admit that, you know, uh, Summer Breeze, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I mean, it just, yeah, God. Oh, it's Seals Croft. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, yeah, Seals and Croft. That's right. I God. Um, but yeah, I I would love to to actually like they they're on like a deck, right? Yeah, on a deck, and we're overlooking the skyline of downtown Kansas City. Um, yeah, really fun. And in fact, so I mentioned that my my uh, basement is this this pub. So we've been doing um, just little, you know. There's a little band here called Iron Band, if you're familiar with them. Dave Schultz and Scott Kenner were doing um, uh, like, you know, corn tunes since they've not been able to huh. play. So we've had them downstairs just to play these little acoustic things. And, you know, really there's been like four of us in the audience, you know, two of whom have four legs. So my dogs are really big fans. Huh. Uh, but we're doing something for, uh, which I'm really excited about um, outside on my patio a couple of actual real professional musicians if that's what they do for a living so uh no disrespect that scott and dave aren't real musicians <laughs> I didn't mean to sound that way uh but we're doing um some music on my patio this weekend um and we're inviting people to donate to the musicians totally free show uh but to be able to donate to the musicians who've not been able to work for the last year realistically because nothing's been open so nice to do that i'll be there perfect <laughs> Perfect. Right, but, at seven, literally, because it's in my backyard, a gate. That's awesome. Um, so before we go, um, can you let people know how they can get in touch with you? Yes. So um, website, brandenergymarketing.com. We're in the process of uh, revamping it to show a lot more of the, the giving back products and concepts there. Um, email, real simple, Mandy, M-A-N-D-I, at brandenergymarketing.com. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that. Send a carrier awesome. pigeon, sub-signal, <laughs> however. Going old school there. All right, Mandy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, and if anybody wants to know more about Big Slick, they can go to bigslickkc.org. There you go. Big Slick KC, like in, like KC, yeah, like the let, letters KC.org. Yeah, Kansas City. Yeah, bigslickkc.org. Awesome. Well, thank you thank so you much, so. Mandy. Thank you. I appreciate it.